Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to take a deeper dive into greenhouses as part of our continued march through the various placeables that is available in the build mode. With the introduction of rice, we have a rice sapling greenhouse. You'll find that located right here in front of us. We also have available six different greenhouses for our fruit or produce. We have three tarp greenhouses and three glass greenhouses. We also have three greenhouses for the purpose of growing mushrooms. So they are left to right, small, medium, and large. We also have a few new ways of selling our produce that we have at greenhouses, as well as other things that we can produce on the farm locally. We have a small farmer's market kiosk to the left. We have a slightly larger kiosk here in the middle of the screen. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the productions with respect to what you can use in productions as far as the greenhouses to further make additional products. And for that, we're going to be talking about these small productions. We have a preserved food factory and we have a bakery as well. Now let's look at all of these in build mode. And then let's go take a look at them in the prices screen. So under build mode, we're going to go to our second down tab. This is where we're going to find our factories, cell points, greenhouses, cultivation, and generators. Specifically to greenhouses, we have the rice saplings greenhouse located right here. It can be bought for $3,000. It's going to require water and it's going to make, well, rice saplings. Then we have three tarp greenhouses. The small one's going to be $9,000. The medium's going to be eighteen, dollars And the large one is going to be thirty-six. All of those only require water. And they are going to produce, in fact, all six of the following greenhouses we're going to look at are going to produce chilies, green onions, lettuce, cabbage, strawberries, garlic, and tomatoes. We then have a small glass greenhouse, a medium glass greenhouse, and a large glass greenhouse. Those are going to be $13,500, $27,000, and $54,000 respectively. We have a small mushroom greenhouse for $9,000. We have a medium mushroom greenhouse for $18,000 and a large mushroom greenhouse for 36. With respect to cell points, well, we have a small farmer's kiosk for $10,000. Then we have a larger farmer's kiosk for $70,000. So quite a big uptick in what this is gonna cost. Are these gonna sell more? than the small one? Are they going to sell faster than the small one? Is there any intrinsic value in having a bigger one versus a smaller one? We're hopefully going to find that out. And then under factories, well, of course, you could place a large bakery for $150,000. You could use the in-game bakery after you buy it, or you could place one of these smaller bakeries for $36,000 and it is going to accept our strawberries that we make in our greenhouses for the making or for the construction of cakes. We also have a preserved food factory Again, we could place a larger preserved food factory down for a mere $330,000. We could use the preserved food factory on this map if we purchase it, or we can place this smaller one down again for a mere $36,000. And it is going to accept all of our produce that is basically grown in these greenhouses. For example, our green onions, our chilies, our garlic are all going to be taken at the preserved foods factory. For the most part, our greenhouses are going to require water. We're going to get water from 
Two different options are containers. We have a water tank for $3,000 right there. And then we have a wind wheel water tank for $1,500. Both of these are going to be water triggers and therefore they're going to be able to supply us with water if your map has no other source of water provided. As far as what are you going to need as far as machinery goes? Well, if we look here at the vehicle shop, you're going to need a way of supplying water to your greenhouses. That's going to be found here under animals, category of barrels. We have four different tankers that are going to be able to tr transfer water. We have the 550, the 1600, which we're going to use in this video, the MKS-8, and the MKS-32. The last two lizard tankers are also going to be able to transport your goat milk, cow milk, liquid fertilizer, and herbicide. Meanwhile, the ABI attachments are going to be limited to water alone. You'll need a way of picking up your pallets from these greenhouses, so you'll need a loader. This video, we're going to use a forklift, specifically the EFG S50. You're also going to need a way to transport those pallets. We're going to use, in this video, the CV flatbed. You can also pick it in a box body configuration. The Lizard Dragon would also work. Or you could pick a trailer from either the flatbed trailers category or the low loaders category for transporting your pallets to a cell point. Step one, you need to obviously fill these greenhouses full of water. We can do that by either pulling up in front of this particular water tanker or pulling alongside our windmill water pump. Just like this. Once we have our tanker full of water, well, we can come up to any one of these blue barrels and deposit our water into our greenhouse. Now, something I want to check, because I hadn't checked this prior to now. Would be if we have, so we do indeed. So we have the ability of putting down an extra water tank that will help us maintain 5,000 liters. So we can put one of these down here. And it should grant us additional water tank capacity. So I'm just going to put it right there. The sublinear water tanks helps you supply your greenhouses with water must be placed near greenhouses. So let's see if this one is going to have more capacity now because we placed our tank next to it. So before we move forward, something interesting has come up here. And I wanted to show it to you and kind of talk through this. So looking at our own production chains. We have all of our various greenhouses, a preserved food factory, and our bakery. I just concluded filling the large glass greenhouse, 45,000 liters worth of water. Then I took a look at our medium glass greenhouse. I've not touched this yet, and it has 5,000 units worth of water in it, 25,000 units total. Then I took a look at the small glass greenhouse. Well, it has 5,000 units of water in it as well. Well, what about all the others? Well, let's look. Our small tarp greenhouses, 5,000 liters. Our small mushroom greenhouses, none. Interesting. Medium tarp greenhouse, 5,000 liters. Medium mushroom, 5,000 liters. Large tarp, guess what? 5,000 liters. Do you see a trend here? Large mushroom and greenhouse for water saplings. 5,000 liters. This seems to have a pretty large radius. And somehow it has given 
all of these greenhouses except for the small mushroom greenhouse way over here. It must be outside its radius of influence. Because this is the only one that doesn't have some amount of water already in it. What happens if I put another one down? Let's see. Let's put this one down over here. Ten thousand liters now of a total of twelve. Before I was pretty sure it was five of seven. Ten thousand liters now of seventeen. Ten thousand liters of fifty. Forty five thousand liters of forty five thousand liters. Okay, that's important to note. So just like the small mushroom greenhouse was out of range of this one, the large glass greenhouse is out of range of the water tanker back there. But somehow it has magically this one tank given 5,000 liters of water to all of our greenhouses other than the one that's outside its range. It's not only increased its capacity by 5,000 liters, it's added 5,000 liters of actual water to the greenhouse, which is really interesting, I think. So let's take note. It is approximately noon in August. And what we're going to do now is we are going to activate our productions. And I want to see basically how much is produced over the course of one month. So we are working on one day months. And in theory, if you were working with, let's say, two day months, then your production would be halved per day for your two day month, such that at the end of the month, you produce the same amount as you would someone who was playing at a single day month. That way it's spread out over the type of the year. The entire production is going to be the same, regardless of the number of days per month that you play. Something else that I want to do is we're going to pick a single product. In this case, let's just use chili peppers to see how much is produced per greenhouse with respect to our productions. So for all of our normal greenhouses, we're just going to pick chili peppers. For our mushroom greenhouses, we're going to pick Enoki. And we're going to fast forward one full month. What I also want to look at, though, is going to be our production speeds. So I've gone through and I've looked at the XML in the save game and the XML in the game files as best as I can find. And I can't find any indicator as to if these greenhouses work on parallel production or serial production. Parallel production would be that we are getting the same amount of output across all of our products, regardless if we have one running or all of them, because they're all growing in parallel with each other. Serial output would be that it makes a unit of chili peppers, and then it stops and it waits and it makes a unit of garlic and then it stops and it waits and makes a unit of lettuce, cabbage, spring onion, strawberries, and tomatoes all in turn. And then it comes back up to chili peppers and makes another chili pepper. That would be in series such that our output is greatly reduced per product the more products that we activate. And I didn't see any indication as to if that was or wasn't the case. But hopefully we can establish that in a second month with a second trial. But before we do that, and before we fast forward, let's run through our production screens here. So our rice saplings, right? We require water and we're going to get rice saplings as an output. We are going to run 48 cycles per month at $2 per month per I believe it 
two dollars per month. So the, the cost is per cycle, and 48 cycles equals two dollars per month. We're going to use three units of water to get one unit of rice saplings. So now it's going to basically see well, how many rice saplings do we get per month with 48 cycles? Our chili peppers, well, they're going to run 528 cycles per month at a $2 cost. They're going to require 12 units of water to make eight units of chili peppers. Our garlic, well, we're going to get more cycles per month for our garlic at 720. We're going to use double the water to get six garlic. So 12 water equals six garlic. Lettuce is 1,008 cycles per month. Eight water for four lettuce. So the garlic and lettuce, twice as much water per product output. Peppers is... Not quite that. We get a little bit more output to our 12 units of water. Napa cabbage, 672 cycles per month. Eight units of water, six units of cabbage. Spring onion, 336 units per month or cycles per month. 12 spring onions from six units of water. So we get double the onions for our water this time around. So this is completely opposite ratio but a lot less cycles per month strawberries we get eight strawberries per cycle 528 cycles and four units of water and then tomatoes four units of water four units of tomatoes 1056 cycles per month so we should be able to mathematically calculate based on eight chilies per cycle 528 cycles how many chilies we should get at the end of one month. Our large mushroom greenhouses, well, we have 816 cycles per month, one unit of water to five mushrooms. Our oyster mushrooms, 672 cycles per month. We're going to get three mushrooms for every unit of water that we consume. So let's just quickly compare our glass greenhouse and our tarp greenhouse cycles per month is the same our medium greenhouse is the same and our small glass greenhouse is the same so all of our fruit greenhouses we'll call it are the same cycles per month so let's go ahead and fast forward We'll see what it looks like in one month. So I think we're going to see some interesting results. First thing I noticed was last month our chili plants, they were a lot smaller. And then overnight, well, they grew in the greenhouse. Our rice saplings over the course of one month, well, they generated two full pallets of rice saplings at 24 pieces each. And if we go inside, well, we can see we have zero units of rice saplings in production. So they basically seem to produce two full pallets of rice saplings per game month. Interesting. From our small tarp greenhouse, we had one pallet of peppers, a thousand units, a thousand liters. We also have 55 peppers inside being worked on on the second pallet. So just over one full pallet of peppers. Our medium greenhouse has 111 peppers inside and two full pallets. So roughly double the production. Our large greenhouse 
What has 227 peppers still inside? And we have four pallets. So once again, double its production. So a medium greenhouse seems to produce twice as much as a small. And a large seems to produce twice as much as a medium. Will that hold true with respect to our glass greenhouses? Well, it should. 56 units, one pallet. 112 units, two pallets. Two hundred twenty-four, two hundred twenty-five units, and four pallets. So indeed, that does continue. With respect to our mushrooms, we have a single pallet for our small mushroom greenhouse, and twenty mushrooms still inside. Over here, we're sitting at 41 mushrooms inside and two pallets. 84 mushrooms inside and four pallets. So once again, our medium produces twice as much as our small and our large produces twice as much as our medium. Now, let's go and clear the board We'll clear these pallets out of the way and we're going to for our mushroom greenhouses we're going to enable our second output and then for our other greenhouses we're going to enable a second output of garlic that should be representative enough because we know that we've gotten one full pallet from small two full pallets from the medium and four full pallets from the large greenhouses so if we have parallel production we should expect the same output in one month. Could we not? Let's find out. And after a month of fast forwarding, we have some interesting results. For our small greenhouse, we now have zero pallets. But we have 584 units of chili peppers, and 539 units of garlic inside the greenhouse. So just over half a pallet of each. For a medium greenhouse, we have one full pallet of each and 1,000 liters, 1,000 liters of each. And we have 168 liters of peppers, 79 liters of garlic. So approximately half for our large greenhouses we have guess what two pallets of peppers two pallets of garlic 338 units of peppers 158 units of garlic approximately double our medium greenhouse And the same should hold for our tarp greenhouses. Now for our mushroom greenhouses. Once again, we have no pallets on our small. And inside, we have 530 units of enoki, 251 units of oyster mushrooms for our medium we have one pallet 
of Inoki. We have 61 liters of Inoki, so it just spawned. And 504 units of oyster mushroom. For our large greenhouse, do we have two pallets of Inoki? We do. And we have a single pallet of oyster mushrooms. So 1,000 liters in each pallet. And 128 liters of Inoki and 8 liters of oyster mushrooms. So again, double the production of the mediums. In both regards, it seems like our production is halved or thereabout when enabling multiple produce. At least our chili peppers are halved. We still have four pallets for our large greenhouse in both regards. And we have two pallets for our medium greenhouse in both regards, but they're one of each. Now this channel is not known for doing videos and talking about what is the best to do something? Which is the best crop to grow in your greenhouses? What's the most profitable crop to grow in your greenhouses? It's not really what I focus on. I focus on the process. And I feel that the best crop to grow in your greenhouses is the one that you want to grow. And if you want to play by only doing what produces the most money, that's fine. That's how you want to play. I will just randomly pick something to have in the greenhouse just to grow it. doesn't really matter to me because there's plenty of ways to make money. Making money in farm sim is fairly easy, so I don't need to already make it the easiest easy possible by just picking the thing that's most profitable. But on that regard, let's look at prices a little bit for these products. So. Thank you, Giants, for organizing this in alphabetic order. At least it's in an order. We can't say certain other things are in any seemingly particular order, but okay. So for our first product that we're going to come to here, which I guess is going to be our chili peppers, right? This is media, or this is normal economy. So easy economy, your price is going to be higher than this. Hard economy. Your prices in general are going to be lower. $732 is the current price in October. It's low. The average highest price is $914 for chili peppers. For Enoki, $687 for the low, $855. Garlic, $735, $914. So to some degree, garlic and chili peppers have the high price is the same on average. It does seem that we maybe get more chili peppers than we get garlic just by looking at the raw numbers that we've seen so far in this video. Lettuce, 1611, 2014. But we can't just go off the, the dollars. We have to go off how much is made too. Maybe we make half as many, half as much lettuce as we do other products. So it being twice the price, it balances out. And in general, Giants does a whole lot of that, where something that's produced less costs more, and therefore it somewhat balances itself out. Napa cabbage, 563 low, 711 high. Oyster mushrooms, 1418, 1758. As we can see, Oyster mushrooms are slower to grow, yet they give you more money. Are they proportionate? Do they still give you more money for being a little bit slower? And you get a lot more money? Or do you get more money, but they're a lot more slower, therefore you make less money? That's for another channel to play the math game and figure it out. I'm not really going to bother with that. 
Then we have our spring onion, 726, 914. Strawberries, 731 low, 914. Tomatoes, 817 low, 1017. So that is basically going to be the economy. Now the next thing I want to see is what happens with respect to selling these things. We have two placeables in this little farm kiosk and a larger kind of kiosk. Is this like the farm production pack in that we can only bring a certain amount to this before it's not accepted? We don't have any sort of pop-up that says I only want so much of something. That would have been interesting. Maybe this one sells twice as fast as this one. We'll just have to find out. Okay, so in this little experiment, we've made 10,000 liters of enoki mushrooms. So 10 pallets of enokis. And we made 20,000 liters or 20 pallets of chili peppers. And I thought, what better way to see if there was a limit that we could sell at the small farmer's market kiosk than to put all of these in basically at the same time. So let's go ahead and shove. I hope this truck can do this. Let's shove these pallets into the trigger. And we're getting $847 per pallet. And they all went in. And they show up in this little basket. Okay. Now let's shove all these peppers in. And they all went in. And the peppers appear in this little basket. So in general, this just seems to be an endless sell point. Like every other sell point in Farm Sim. A little sad. I was kind of hoping that we got the farm production pack. Yeah, it was a, eh, you know, whatever. DLC for Farm Sim 22. Didn't go over at all. Um, but it had a couple interesting things. And one of the interesting things that I thought it did have were the limited quantity demand sell points. That they only wanted certain types of products. They only wanted certain amounts of certain types of products on any given day. I kind of like that idea for these small sell points. But this one, it appears to be more of a bring it all and a bring as much as you want. So why would you go for this one? Since it's nearly seven times more expensive as this one. I don't know, other than the fact that it just looks different. It's going to take the same product. It's going to take the same amount of product, an unlimited amount. Right? So guys, I hope this was useful. I hope you figured out what you might want to do with respect to greenhouses. It does appear that production is more of a cereal type production than parallel because we did get half or approximately half of our output was chili peppers. Half of our output was garlic. So our production does seem to go down if we select multiple outputs. Our rice saplings, well, they're just still pumping along here with making two pallets per day because they're just a single output. And rice saplings can be used both on the field but they can also be used and sold. So here we have rice saplings, farmer's market, Goldcrest Valley, or the train sell point, and the warehouse. They're all gonna accept those. 
And it looks like, well, right now is a really darn good price. $6,000 per thousand liters. And this is 180 kilograms each. 180 kilograms each. Now, is this 24 or 180? Let's go find out. So our warehouse is the best price for these rice saplings. And I think we already have our answer with respect to the fact that we have 96 units here strapped down to the truck. So I believe we have 24 units per, or 20 some units per pallet. And we got $590. So it's definitely not a whole lot of money as one would look when we looked at the prices because again, remember that is per 1,000 liters. And we definitely don't have 1,000 liters of rice saplings per pallet. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Once again, with respect to greenhouses, do you like the idea of having multiple greenhouses, at least multiple designs of greenhouses? What do you think of the inclusion of mushrooms to the game as far as a greenhouse prop? And uh, what what are you gonna do? What what's your what's your product of choice for the greenhouses? And until next time, happy farming.